So <clears throat> the next chart that we create or uh, that we use uh, on a regular basis in in our chart books, a very very useful tool, kind of a, a what I call it, an inventory or a level two data chart is going to be our footprint chart. It's like a, a, an inside view into what's happening inside each of our candles. So again, we're just going to simply go through the process of duplicating our chart and we'll just reverse some of the processes because I like the footprint in a dark, in a dark mode, um, in a dark mode candlestick chart. So let's pick our 10 tick again, or our 5 tick, doesn't really matter, duplicate our chart. We now have chart number 3, uh, we'll just make this guy a little bit bigger, uh, we can just make it full size in fact. Let's, uh, let's just control, alt and x, this is our, oh, which will be our footprint chart. So we just want to go back into our chart, chart uh, graphic settings, change this back to white okay chart background change it back to black okay and we come down we can change our candles do, 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 do. red okay uh, this is our up oh, sorry that should be green up fill green okay down fill outline red and down Red, okay, and um, we won't really be looking at these in a minute. We'll see what I mean. So apply, okay. So this is currently set to range bars and ticks. As mentioned previously, we go to our F5 function again, and we want to change this from a range bar standard in ticks, and we want to change this to a reversal bar in ticks. Here we go, reversal bar in ticks, and we're simply going to change this from a 10 tick. You can use a 10 tick if you wish. We're going to change this to a 5 tick. For our example. So, next step, this is not uh, what we are familiar with, with our range bars, as you can see, we just have candles here. So, next we want to add our studies. Several ways to add our studies. We can simply right click and we can go to studies, or we can go up again, studies analysis. There we go. So, studies, as you can see, and it, uh, it mentions the shortcut, which I have become totally familiar with using. So you can either right click the chart as mentioned before, you can go to analysis and we'll be getting into this a little bit later also for the unhide and hide of the studies in this analysis. Click F6 for this, you'll bring up this window. And let me just double check, I think you can possibly bring it up from here. No, okay, so right click or F6, which I use the shortcut, F6, here we go. So in here, what we want to add in here is, our number bar studies. So simply hit N on your keyboard, it'll bring you down in the list. N on the keyboard, and we want to pick our number bars. Here we go, number bars. Add. And to go through this process now, we just want to go slowly, slowly, slowly through our settings for our number bars. So I'll just bring up mine to confirm that everything is correct as we go. So for our column one, we want to change these. We want to change this into our bid vol times our ask vol. So this is what's actually showing inside the candle here. So bid vol times ask volume. Um, we want to have our background. We want to change our background on the dominant side. Background on dominant side. And we want to have uh, for background coloring method, none, because we're going to um, have, our, uh, have our actual quantities instead. So we just scroll up to none and transparent. And then we want our text coloring method. And that, this is the important one. This is going to be based on the diagonal dominant side ask volume bid volume percentage. So this is going to be to do with our um, our imbalances. So we want our based on diagonal dominant side based on our diagonal dominant side ask volume bid volume percentage bid volume percentage ask volume bid volume percentage uh, to volume. No, uh, 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 uh. Fast, uh, uh, 
based on separate no we'll be getting to that in a minute based on diagonal the, where is it do, 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 do. based on our diagonal dominant bid volume dominant ask volume to bid volume diagonal dominant side ask volume where the hell is it uh, do, do, do. I don't see it. What the hell am I looking at? Ah, diagonal dominant side ask volume percentage. There we go. So for this, again, this is totally, and we'll, I'll show you in a few minutes um, what's, what's causing, uh, what, what we're actually doing here. So basically in this, we're choosing to color. So column one, range three, up color. And I'll show you where the range one, two, and three uh, quantity is decided in a minute. So for, for me personally, I prefer to have only one type, or we call them the imbalances. So I prefer to have a column one, range three, up color. And we'll talk about the percentage then when we get to it now in a second. So I'm just gonna change the rest of these to white because I don't use them. So it just keeps the, uh, the, the, the number normal, or the, the, the change in text the same. So there is no, no text visible, basically. I'm gonna change all these to white, 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 white. And just to show you what this is for, we'll just scroll down and we'll come back up then and we'll continue on to the next one. So for this, this is to identify our imbalances. So down here in our imbalances, I think it's around the 90s, 90s, here we go. So down here we have column one percent compare thresholds. In here we want, I just personally use zero, don't want, any imbalances for zero, I use zero, zero, and then I use nine. Now, some people like to use five, some people like to use three, seven, whatever you want. Nine basically is 900%, so 9x. So when we get into the footprint chart, you'll know a little bit later what how our imbalances are. So if the buy side is 900 times bigger than the sell side on the DOM, in this particular level, it will print a green imbalance. So the, the, the quantity number will be printed in green and vice versa to the sell side. But we'll be getting that, we'll be getting into that in the actual footprint module. So just to understand what we're actually doing here by coloring this, that's all. So the next, the next I have set as well, it depends on you. You can leave this as nothing or transparent. But I actually like to populate this, and I'll show you this um, once we once we generate the chart. But this is a little kind of a, a volume profile set side by side each other. Again, it's going to be just another, um, rather than have the actual just the range bars, which we're familiar with. This is just an additional tool that I have incorporated because I really liked it. And this is going to be the, the visual representation of the volume again at the level and the dominant side volume at the level based on color. So we're just going to get into that now as well and put that on here. And you can you can put additional um, on again as well in the column three if you wish. So this is just column one, two, and three side by side each other. Um, I leave my number three. I don't use it. So I'm just going to color the, the second column at this moment in time. And these are just columns represented kind of inside a candle or that's how you could describe it, but you'll see all this as we get into the actual footprint module later. But for this example, I am simply going to put, um, I'm going to put what we have on here. So no text again, we want to go to full background. We don't want full background. We want the ask just to make sure I have it right because it took me quite a while to set these up. And I want to have ask volume split profile, ask volume split profile across bid and ask. And that's basically um, showing us uh, which is dominant in, 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 in the easiest way. And then I'm going to change it to based on, just to confirm, as far as I know, based on dominant total volume actual. So that just allows the color to print. So based on, based on dominant, where are we? Based on dominant total volume, should be here somewhere. Dominant total volume actual and you can come in in your own time again and just pick these as you wish to play with them as you wish to populate them now that you understand what they are so based on dominant total volume so I like to see the color printed based on that dominant total volume and that's simply you'll see in a minute I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about um, it'll color then uh, based on that the next one is none I just like to put all these the same color 
you don't have to do it. You can put them vibrant. I like to leave them a little bit darker. What's this bottom one? So just the cancels. I like to keep them all the same as this 127 here. So just put all these into the 127. 127. Okay. Uh, 127. 27. Okay. That's just the pigment. The color of the pigment. That's all. Uh, 127. 127. Okie dokie. And we'll do the same for the red. Make the red this 170. Could make it 127 as well. I like the darker color. Let's go 127. Leave it. Save as changing. Changing too many. 127. Okay. 127. 127. Okie dokie. And you get the point. Okay. And so on and so forth. Just changing a few little bits and pieces to the personal preference. So next, we'll leave this one entirely, uh, this column three. We don't want to do anything here. You can do similar. You can create another study beside your previous study and so on and so forth if you wish to add in and another one. I would I just personally leave this alone. So no text, full background, transparent and none is the setting on that. We don't want to change anything in here. So as we scroll down here, we'll just go through these. So pull back column. Uh, one number bars text so we don't really use any of this stuff either again feel free uh, to, to play with these no text full background stays the same non-transparent nonsense which means we're not using these basically none um, full background non-transparent non no text full background and so on and so forth but you can incorporate these as you wish if you wish so just to continue on down here we will be getting into the next so the next stage we have highlight minimum volume no none of these the one i do like to highlight again it's personal preference not not everybody likes to uh, to highlight these but i like to highlight a point of control highlight color you can leave it yellow nice and easy so point of control highlight width i like to change this just to a one just makes it a little bit smaller but it's still visible this is just the thickness of the line or the box that goes around the column and then i like to change it to um uh, to uh, highlight the point of control so and this is referring to column one so just back in here we have column one which we've already decided to populate and this is just uh, around the, uh, the point of control of the column one which is basically what we're actually creating which is the footprint chart which you've now decided to create so uh, point of control highlight width no and uh, point of control highlight point of control in one so no columns we do we want it in column one or for column one i mean so we've selected that again that's personal preference if you do want to do that or not um, totally up to you so two uh, uh, next open and close marker style so open to close boxes is what i set this to open to close boxes and then place open marker slash box this is just a column which sits beside it sits beside our candles or what we call our footprint candles you can leave this blank if you don't wish to have anything which actually i'm i'm considering doing this in the future is just changing this back to nothing and having no because you get the indication of direction anyways from the actual position or the, the movement of the footprint uh, um, bar anyways but for now we'll keep it for the user-friendly version or the easy version i just like to change this to a kind of a green maybe something like this these are just a little uh, panes beside the bars here so let's see Boop. nice wineish color that'll do nicely okay next single value text alignment we have uh, on the right side yep um, bold highlight last trade price you can say bold only in here perfect scrolling down uh, where are we we have uh, last trade bid highlight color last trade ask highlight color perfect bid threshold um we leave it as a zero in here uh, the numbers separator i prefer personally i don't like this line it's easier to see if we just put an x in and this is just an x between the bid and the ask um, um quantities that have been filled at that particular level that's all nothing too exciting here same as chart font keep it easy um, if you want a maximum font size for automatic font size if you want to just put this to zero it makes it easier it just populates automatically when you put things to zero uh, no and then we can highlight excuse me highlight the pullback color you can change this color if you wish i'm going to change it slightly brighter i like to see this one a little bit red okay perfect scrolling down historical pullback font we can just again leave this to zero 
we have yes, we have bar data, yes, and we have zero, zero, and nine. So column percent each threshold. So we're not using these in the in the column two and column three is totally um, irrelevant. So we can just change all these to zero. Uh, zero comma zero comma zero. And the same for this one, zero comma zero comma zero. Not that it makes a difference because it's already not populated or we're not using it, but just in the future to know. So zero, zero, next. And we're scrolling down, we've got no, automatic, um, candlestick outline width. I like to change this again, same as previous. I just like to leave it smaller, uh, the smaller size. Uh, pull back column right offset is zero, and then we have no and no. And just so we don't see any of these, we, we don't need these colors. Uh, this is just the up color inside the bar and the out color. I just need to leave these black so we don't actually get interfered with by these. So just change all these to black. Again, totally personal preference as you go through all these settings, but it's just to know how and what way they function, that's all. Alrighty. <clears throat> black, black, black. Boopity boop, boopity boop. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, we're nearly there. We're nearly ready to populate our chart. Just a few final settings. All the all the remainders basically stay the same. All these 100, 200, 300 all stay the same. No columns. Um, we have a yes, a zero, and a no. And this is changes to black as well. Default background color changes to black. It's just less less visually um, straining. So require one tick intraday uh, uh, intraday data storage time. I change this to no. Okay, we have one, we have no, no, and spacing adjustment three. So nothing else to change here. So once we hit apply, okay, with every chart as well, we just want to make sure that our chart region is set to one. This just means that our, our study is overlaid on top of the chart and it's not populated in a different area, a separate box in the chart. And value format, this will be relevant in all our charts again, just inherited. Nothing else to worry about in here. There's nothing else even in here, blah, 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 that we need to worry about. In this particular chart, we will get into it as we have our different studies. So, okay, apply, okay. So we now have our footprint chart. It doesn't look too spectacular in this view, but if we just drag our chart now and we zoom in, we're gonna see our numbers. And here we go. So this is the, wait, no, there we go. So here we have our puck, just to describe a couple of things. We'll be getting into it, into it in the futures module anyway. Uh, sorry, in the, in the footprint module anyways. So here we have, this is the, the volume study that I did additional. This is column two. We did our, our dominant side and our color based and so on based on this. Here's our yellow box, which is our POC as previously mentioned. And here are our imbalances, our 9x sellers from the, the buyers that stepped up here. As you can see, there's a 1 here and there's a 9 here. Again, there's a 46 here and there's a 4 here. So you've got the imbalances. Again, you have a 0 here and a 10 here. So nine times and you can set the multiple um, the multiples up as you wish to, to color these different colors maybe you want to set a 300 to populate a different color or you want to set it to color blue after 200 percent change or whatever way you want to set those up you can do that but i prefer the less complicated some of these things are when you're when you're in a high volatile environment the easier it is so i like to just see certain information but again each to their own um, you can uh, tweak and adjust these as you wish once you understand what's happening here after you've completed the, um, the footprint module. So last thing in here, we just want to go in and we just want to change this, identify uh, this chart differently. So again, we just go to our F5 and we just come up to our advanced settings and we just want to put our footprint, ES footprint. Bada bing, bada boom, apply, okay, and we are done. So we've created basically at this stage, let's return this to a normal size, three of our main charts that we like to use in the chart book. Squeeze it in nice and tidy in here. Super duper, super, super valuable chart. The only thing we'll be getting into it anyways, but the only thing you want to be very, very careful with these charts that you are using them in line with your structure and your edge. You do not want to go getting swallowed up by this footprint chart, watching what's happening in these charts. Um, they can they can get you into dangerous situations very easily. So just keeping that in mind. 